Hi guys, in this part four of the series, Hamza, our Muslim apologist, um, something, I don't know, I don't see this number four on his list, but we finally get something real, so I'll take it. What we get is the admission that there is no good reason to believe that gods or goddesses exist. So the first thing you do when speaking to an atheist is concede the point you can't prove a creator exists. So why doesn't he just leave it right there and go home? <laughs> And, well, okay, I suspect that, um, number one, it's the inability to differentiate between proof and evidence, and number two, the definition of both. Because our Hamza, the Muslim apologist, simply states that I, the non-theist, can't, well, he uses proof, so I'll just go with it, can't prove that gods don't exist. Just as they can't prove a creator doesn't exist. Well... You can't say it like that, because like that, it is simply wrong. Because since I cannot check everything in, in all possible universes, it is impossible to make a general knowledge statement and claim that there are no gods or goddesses. I can, however, provide definitive evidence simply by using logical thinking that the God, as described in Torah, New Testament and Quran, does not exist, can't exist. And I, I've tried to explain it to him, but he can't seem to process the provided information. Now, next he suggests theists should reword their statement to say they believe something and this does not require evidence. And then this somehow reverses the burden of proof. I don't know how, but well, once again, Hamza displays his inability to process information correctly. A person does not require evidence to form a belief. The mere conviction that something is the case is sufficient for me as a person. But the moment you disclose this belief, anyone can and will challenge you, even more so if you expect others to believe what you believe. It is not up to me to provide evidence for the non-existence of whatever it is that you believe, since the burden of proof remains with the claimant, always. So my rejection of your claim does not magically transfer this onto me now. If you are somehow convinced fire-spitting, flying dragons exist, you can believe this and without any evidence. But if you tell me about your belief, I will ask you why you believe this and what the reasons are. And the same goes for talking ants or gods or whatever, because you are making a claim. So you need to provide the required evidence. So both statements made in this video are wrong. Now, I, I wanted to finish here, but since I hear this often, let me elaborate using two different examples. Number one, if I say I believe I was abducted by aliens and they conducted uh, sex experiments on me and sent me back home in the morning, and you say you don't believe me, do you now have to provide the evidence that I was not abducted by aliens? <laughs> and a second example, if I say gods don't exist and you don't believe me, do you now have to provide evidence that gods exist? You see, that's how stupid this is. All right, guys, see you in the next video.